let's look at how to connect dBeaver to Google's BigQuery. So I have um, logged into uh, my console and basically what I need to do is we need to create something called a service account. So from the hamburger, we're gonna go over to here and we will go to service accounts. Within service accounts here, we will create a service account and then we can give it a name, right? So since I'm going to use this to connect from dBeaver, um, that's what I'm gonna call it. I'll call it dBeaver. We can see there it gives the service account uh, thing. And I could say, you know, for connecting dBeaver to BigQuery. Then I'll go ahead and cr uh, create that service account. Um, the other thing we want to do is make sure it has uh, make sure it has the permissions to do whatever uh, whatever it can with the particular data source. So here under Role, we're going to scroll down to BigQuery, and we're going to select BigQuery Admin, and we'll click Continue. So that'll allow us from DB to do anything with BigQuery that we're normally allowed to do. Um, then the last thing we need to do is to create a key, right? So here it says create key. Um, it isn't optional in our particular case. So what we'll do is we'll click the create key button right here, and we'll go ahead with the uh, with the JSON file uh, as it's uh, as it specifies and click create. So that has saved uh, this particular file um, to my downloads. Okay, now we're ready to create a connection to BigQuery from dBeaver. Over here in dBeaver, I'm just going to go to um, File and New. And we'll make sure if this isn't already spun open, we will spin open dBeaver and go to Database Connection. Now we want to make sure that all is selected and we're just going to start typing in the filter box big and we'll see that it comes up with Google BigQuery. Then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Okay. Now it's going to ask us for a bunch of different information. First it needs to know what project that uh, that is going to uh, be billed for this. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to come down to here and we're going to go back up to um, our projects here. You can see I only have actually the one project and basically I'm just going to select its ID. All right, so there's the ID for my project and I'm going to come over to here and I will paste that ID in there. Right, then it asks for the service account itself. Okay, so back over here, I'm just going to click cancel to get rid of this. Um, we can go, I'll click on service accounts right here, and we can see the, uh, the service account uh, information. So if I click here on the email address, um, it basically takes me to this, and that's actually, uh, that's actually what I'm going to use for, uh, for the service account. So I'm going to use that email address, and I'm going to put that into, paste that into service account right here. Finally, I need to add the key path. So when I click on Browse here, I can go to my downloads, and here is the latest file to, uh, to have been downloaded. So I'm going to grab that, and then I'll go ahead and click Open. Having done that, I should be able to just go ahead and click Finish. And I can see that, yes, uh, the connection was created. So let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, let me just spin this open like we normally do. Right? If it's your first time, you'll get the message for downloading a driver. So we'll do that. And now I should actually be connected. So at this point, I could, for instance, create a new SQL editor. Um, I'll just go over to here. I will scroll down to find BigQuery. Which is right here. Um, since I'm gonna be using it a lot, I'm actually gonna go ahead and pin it. All right, so now I can go to BigQuery. Sure, that's fine. Um, and then here I can go to add data and I can say explore the public data sets, right? So here in the public data sets, uh, we have a whole bunch of different things. Um, let me actually just uh, let me do something like this. So let me grab uh, baby names. 
Right, and so here is the baby name set. Right, I should be able to click view data set. And that will make sure that the public data are now added um, under my resources, right? So here's public data right here. Um, and then we can actually, we can actually use um, any of the stuff that we want. Um, so just real quick, uh, let's see, so let's go to names. Uh, USA names is a, uh, is a data set here that basically is the, uh, the names of all individuals um, in the U.S. over about the past century. Um, so some information on how to kind of connect into this and get the right stuff. So um, here I can click on either of the tables, right? So the one that goes to current, um, that's the one here. Notice we can get a preview of the data. So there it shows us the, the kind of data that we're looking at. Here's the details of the data. And this is the easiest way for getting your, uh, for getting the from part. Um, so I'm gonna actually grab this part right here. Um, and that's almost gonna give me exactly what we want. So for instance, if I say select star from, and then I'll just uh, do this. Notice I'm using the back tick here. Um, move these out of the way. Right, followed by another back tick. Um, and I'll just say limit 10, right? So I'll select uh, basically the first 10 records from that particular data set, right? Um, it chugs away and it dies a horrible death. Oh yeah, right. Um, so the issue is here that uh, what you have to watch out for are colons in this name. Those need to be turned to periods. Okay, so we make that change. <clears throat> Run this again, and there's the top 10 records from that particular database, from that data set. So now we can see, yes, our connection is in fact working.